Hello and good evening from my uh, model railway layout uh, Bedstead Junction. Uh, it's now just approaching uh, 10 to 9 on a Friday night during lockdown. I'm sure many of you are uh, locked down at the moment. So, you know, we've a lot of us would like to be out and about on a Friday night. Uh, but that's not possible, obviously. So I'm doing this to keep myself uh, sane or partially sane or maybe if I never was sane in the first place who knows but anyway <laughs> listen to that uh, now we're, we're on the layout tonight we're looking at uh, we've got two different locomotives um, on the in the station here well the actual castle will, will be in there at some point and then over on the fire station there's a third locomotive which is the uh, a 262 tank engine 2MT Ivert tank Okay, but we will be focusing mainly on Spitfire t uh, tonight. Uh, it may have been featured in other videos. Uh, let's have a look and see now. So we're just going to start her up. Pulls away quite smoothly, as you see. And we're going to talk about um, certain things. I mean, it is going to be focusing today on um, plus and minus points of various. Uh, locomotives you may come across in your hobby now I don't know about you but for me at least uh, I've only been able to buy a lot of my locomotives because they've been available on places like eBay secondhand and in fact that's where I bought most of my locomotives during the lockdown and um, they've been at prices that, that made them affordable I think if you wanted to buy uh, the, the present Hornby Castle class you're looking at, I think it's over 150 quid. I think it's more like 200 if I'm, uh, my memory serves me well. And you know, at, at that kind of price, it's good, you know, to get yourself a, collect, a little collection of locomotives, it's going to really going to cost you a lot of money. You, you would want to say buy only a small number, maybe, unless you've got, unless you're incredibly wealthy. But this one, I, I think I got for about 60 quid from eBay. This car, second hand castle. Now we can, um, Hornby always use to um, include some very useful information in their booklets. We have these. Now, excuse me, it can be a little bit of jittery camera work if we go along tonight. I'm feeling a bit jittery. But here we go. Anyway, R2318 is um, our castle class, and that I believe indicates that this locomotive was from July 2003. So basically we're looking at a 17, maybe 18 year old locomotive. Now when I bought this for me, you know, one thing I always do is read the description carefully. And apparently what this one had done, I mean, the, the previous owner had kept it in, in an exhibition case. And the seller um, told me that um, the all the parts were there, but that's the... Uh, the drawbar between the tender and the locomotive have been uh, removed for display purposes. But it was all included and uh, obviously he wasn't um, confident on fitting it back on. And um, obviously as long as I knew that, bore that in mind, then um, you know, fine. So I, I bought it, I bought it, I mean you know, it had a good accurate description. And it had it hardly ever been used. So this one's already ever seen a layout. Now, okay, um, a lot of people may argue against uh, locomotives being kept in display cases. And for me personally, I'd rather have my locomotives out and running like, like this one is right now. But then again, each of their own, and the, the previous owner kept this in pristine condition in, a, in, the, in an exhibition case. And that's what gave the previous owner pleasure to see it in the case and now I'm getting the, the pleasure I mean, it, it's probably thanks to him keeping it in a case that is in such wonderful condition it really is uh, in unblemished wonderful condition it was like brand new like having a brand new locomotive out of the box you can see it's running quite well too now looking at the uh, actual leaflet which we'll get come back to in just a moment 
We're going to have a little look at some of the things you get with this. Now, it came with all the instructions, which we'll normally get with the new locomotive. So, it tells you it comes with a Type H Ringford motor. Okay. Now, as far as the Ringford motor is concerned, I've got no problems with the Ringford motor myself. Okay. I like them. Okay. So, now I'll get that one out there because other people have been critical of them. I like them. And I'll explain to you why I like them in just a moment. And it's this. The Type H Ringford motor, you can actually replace the motor brushes and springs. Okay, so that's the most likely um, thing to wear out in a, in a motor. And they're easily replaceable. I've never had to do one in a Hornby yet. But I've, I've taken out and cleaned up a couple of mainline uh, mainline ones, and they're, you know, the actual procedure is, is more or less the same. And uh, once you've got used to uh, holding the springs in, in place, usually a brush and spring change is, is nothing, it's, it's easy to do. Now, so you've got a serviceable motor. It also tells you how you can, uh, to lubricate the gears. So you have to remove the motor unit to get the gears and it even tells you where, where all that is. It tells you where you to lubricate the lubricate the, the uh, locomotive as well with oil to keep it all in tip top condition. Okay so this is the kind of thing you would expect to get in 2003. Now the actual um, tender itself clips onto the locomotive. So you press the two together and they snap together and they're clicked together perfectly. Excellent. Okay, so that's uh, some information regarding the uh, locomotive itself. Now this one's called Spitfire. It was originally called Clifford Castle, because it's a castle locomotive, so a lot of them were named after castles. But this one had its name changed uh, to commemorate the, uh, the Royal Air Force. The Royal Air Force in the Battle of Britain. So calling it Spitfire sort of was an acknowledgement of the um, sacrifice that our airmen made during the, the conflict of World War II. Now they were a very very successful locomotive, the Castles, brought in by Charles Benjamin Collett in the uh, in about 1923-24, I think. And it was brought in uh, as a successor to the Star Class locomotives. And at the time it was built, it was the most powerful locomotive. It's it's a 460, so it's got four leading wheels, six driving wheels and no training wheels. We'll have a look at that configuration in just a moment. And this is the very, very, very late last development of the castles. So this is what the castle would have looked like from say about the mid 1950s onwards. Now bear in mind that sadly the castles were all withdrawn by the end of 1965 as far as I can recall. And that was because of, of course uh, there was a plan that British Rail should be switching over to diesel and electric. In fact on the western region of British Rail it would have been dieselisation. And in fact, they, could, they, they even called it D-Day, the day of dieselisation. So it wasn't Deliverance Day, it was dieselisation day. And that's obviously a matter of, of opinion, uh, what you think of that. Now, we'll have a look at some other things on this locomotive. Now, there's plus and minus points for everything, as there is in life. But if you've got to look at things in plus, uh, plus points, if you can, and take positives. Okay, that's what we'll be doing for this particular one. Remember, it was from 2003. And this is probably the peak of what you could get in 2003. And in fact, I think it's an absolutely marvellous model. It really is. I mean, for one thing that I like about this model is it feels sturdy. It feels well made. Okay. And um, I've taken it apart and it's quite easy, quite easy to take to pieces, as you, as you saw from there. It's serviceable. You can keep the, the motors going properly. Got the double chimney there, which the uh, all the castles ended up with, and I think they end up with uh, f some of them end up with four row superheaters. Uh, a lot of the um, 
modifications that were carried out to these uh, locomotives were done uh, by Connett's successor Hawksworth and it was all really to get an extra, extra performance out of them and also um, the ability really to use lower quality coal so I think they, were, they, they needed Welsh, Welsh coal whether or not there was a, a shortage of any kind after the war I don't know probably coal yeah there was, was probably all to do with coal and coal rationing and everything else but anyway it's got the usual copper capped uh, chimney there but you can see it's double it's got a double chimney it's got the usual safety valve covering whistles at the back and it's got the coal load in the back there as well and the actual motor itself the ring foot motor is not in the tender it's not not there it's actually in the locomotive itself so you've got a lo loco powered ring foot uh, in, um, locomotive with a ring foot motor in it which I, for me at least that's a real plus now one of the things it doesn't come with and um, if you see at the very very front of there you can just about see just under where it says 5071 there's a little sort of dot in the middle and from there's two levers coming out and that's to actually open up the smoke box and that's what they call the dart okay it's called a dart that's not separately fitted it's, it's a molding as part of the actual uh, smoke box itself now there is an advantage to this in that um it can't break off okay the um so it makes you sort of less afraid to play with it really and then if you come round, we'll come around and have a look at it as well now one thing about these is that back in 2003 with hornby you didn't get the uh a decorated detailed cab so the cab came in black like this you, you there is detail in there but it's not been picked out with any cut with any color scheme of any kind but what i will do to um, when i get a chance i will be adding a loco crew to this locomotive so if you add a, lo add a locomotive crew that will bring the whole thing to life now you can just right see back there you can see in there now there's four four sort of foot rests or hand on the tender there's one down there one there one there one there as far as i'm aware they're all part of the molding as well in fact i think they are they're not separately fitted parts now the last locomotive i bought for separately fitted parts uh without naming names and anything else the dart, which I described on the front of the locomotive, it was separately fitted. And it was in fact separately fitted. It had fallen off and it was in the bottom of the box, along with one of the and separately fitted handles from the tender. So that's maybe a plus point to these, that these are not separately fitted parts, so they can't break off. That's your advantage, that's your plus point. Okay. Other people might say that's a negative. I've come out to, to regard that as being a positive, a definite positive for me. It makes you less frightened to take out of the box. Okay. And again, we're going to have a look at, um, in a minute, uh, one of the more modern things here. This is not a super detailed model, the one we're looking at here. In fact, we looked at the county, I think it was yesterday or the day before, uh, the county class, which I've only just received. Okay, that's, another, that's a Hornby Railroad model. But this would have been like the a, a, would have probably been a top notch model back in the back in the early two thousands. Okay, it's got a lovely amount of detail on it, um, and it's got enough detail for me. I like the coal load as well. Okay, that kind of like it looks like it's sort of wet, don't it? Because they used to wet the coal the coal to stop the dust from uh, flying up everywhere. Okay, it's got a little, it's got separately fitted um, rails on the back there. So there are separately fitted parts on here. and But the, the beauty of this locomotive is, um, they've all stayed attached to the locomotive. Yeah, uh, one thing you do find sometimes is, uh, on the back of the cab, that's, I don't think that rails and rail there is a separately fitted part. 
but again it's one less part to fall off okay it's got the little um handles there for the you should imagine that's for uh, water and water scoops and that sort of thing handles there attached everything's still attached with the locomotive number 5071 spitfire okay so we'll, we'll just take it around the track now Ooh, going the wrong way we we'll reverse whoops there we are now we're on our way again And I think that's with a lot of things too with, with uh, mod, modern railways. Sometimes you have to be using your imagination. Okay. So, obviously this is a, a small six foot by four foot layout. Uh, placed on top of my bed. Which I need to take down tonight if I want to go to bed. But it's what... It, but for me it's made it possible. But you can kind of uh, think about maybe... A locomotive like this flying along the seawall at Dawlish. What a sight it must have made. If you ever, if you've never been to Dawlish, uh, it's a perfectly good, uh, good place for uh, looking at trains because the mainline station is right, right on the seawall. And in fact, sir. Uh, I've travelled to Dawlish by train before and it's a lovely journey all along the seawall. Well, as you see it's a lovely runner this locomotive from 2003. Remember it's a 17 year old locomotive maybe getting on for 18 and it's running perfectly well. And round she goes. Uh, running into 16 minutes now, 17 minutes. But there's something else I'd like to talk about. Now, I mentioned uh, in my review the other day that about this particular county class locomotive that's uh, in the station as well. It's a beauty. It's an absolute beauty. I love it. It's an Hornby Railroad model, so it's not got as much detail as the, uh, the the premium uh, grade um, locomotives so again it's got a black cab the same as it got on the uh, on the Spitfire there I will be adding a crew again because again with that kind of cab it comes to life with a crew okay but the thing that that I'd say about this particular one is is the motor I don't give you any details about the motor at all I don't in, in, in the instructions here I don't think it even tells you where the motor is what oh, does yes I tell a lie there's a motor there it's got it's got there but as far as looking after the motor and this is something which you'll find I don't know how often these locomotives will need the motor replaced but it says here the locomotive is fitted with a sealed long life motor which requires no maintenance Mm -hmm. A long pause with there. <laughs> After a considerable amount of use, the motor may require replacement, and this should be carried out by a Hornby service dealer. Now, I don't know. I mean, if how much would that? If you had to re pay someone to replace the motor on this, how much would it cost? And I know a lot of people. You know, I've seen a fellow YouTubers who can take motors out, can solder. You probably may, I don't know whether you can, this just comes unplugged, you don't see where the motor comes out. You don't see anything about the wiring. Nothing, so you need to, that's something I will be looking at. But again, it's a fantastic mo uh, thing, but remember that with the Spitfire going around there, the Ringford motor that, you know, can be serviced. It can be taken apart and cleaned. Well, this one, the motor, if it should go pop, it's going it's to need to be replaced. So, but a plus point of this is, and again, plus point, is a fantastic runner. It's beautifully smooth. It runs. It runs lovely. Okay, and I've heard. I've, I've heard from a, a, a fellow YouTuber who is also a modern railway enthusiast that these are really good, reliable motors in these. So it's give, it, that's in, uh, give me a lot of uh, faith and confidence. So I think this. Uh, loco here 
even though you cannot service the motor it's going to give me many many hopefully give me many many years of good service now we're running into 20 20 minutes here now I intended this I, I intended to make these videos to last about 15 minutes but they I, I seem to there's so much you want to say on these I'm always worried that I'm going to dry up of things to say but they I don't seem to have uh, well, a lot of people say I never shut up and that's living proof I suppose now in this bedroom you're going to see well, one or two things around here which you can't help seeing uh, you know, I might as well tell you some of the things that are around the room. You know, you've got the various things here, like my grommet collection up there, looking rather happily down. Grommets and one and shoulder sheep. My shoulder sheep. Wait, where's Sean? A couple of tools there, which uh, are become really sort of essential for me. If anybody hasn't got one yet and they're thinking about it, make your life better. Get one. That's to put the uh, locomotive onto the uh, onto the track and also carriages. And this is a replica of the old 1950s Triang Hornby Uncoupler. So you put that under the coupling hooks and lift them up and you uncouple. That's just, that's just in case you wonder what those things were there. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to close things down for tonight. I think I'm going to be doing a... a Possibly a change of loco in a minute. Oh, and what we'll do as well, we'll just um, show you something before we uh, say goodbye. Now my Spitfire is going to be running up to the signal there. Right there, okay. Perfect, okay. So just by the signal on the signal box there. So we just need to change the points. I haven't motivated these points because this layout is designed to come apart every night and I, I actually even take all the tracks and track apart as well the tracks not uh, not pinned down well, there's a couple of things that you can um, gather from the, uh, this I'll just bring her in to the station Okay, so we've um, stopped her there. Now, you saw how well it went over the points and everything else. And that's a, that to me is a sign of a good locomotive. Uh, you, you want one really preferably that does not stall on points. And you don't, have to, you don't want to rev it up. I, you, you probably saw me demonstrate this on another uh, video that I had to do with it with a mainline locomotive. And that's that... Um, if you want to rev it up to get it over the points, you know, if it's going to stall, you need to just get over the points by the momentum of the locomotive. Then you're in danger of really coming with a really poorly controlled entrance into the station. And of course, what you don't want to do is, um, especially with a layout like this, is keep going off the edge of the layout. Okay, so the whole train and the carriages are probably good with it. So you need to have good control uh, with, your locom with, your, with your locomotives. And certainly my Spitfire gives me that. Okay, now so what we'll do is we'll have um, just a quick look at her again. And I'll try to bring my lamp over. You have to excuse the lighting. And we're dealing with the kind of basic lighting we got. Other people got studio lighting now. All these professionals in that with their uh, no stuff. There we are. Look at that Spitfire, beautiful. What a lovely locomotive. Okay. And th there's another video I've, I've got out, which you'll see on my channel. Look me up, Paul Cherry Trains. It's, it's just three words, Paul Cherry Trains. You no, know, just spaces in between, no hyphens or anything. And that's where I reviewed uh, County of Devon. County of Devon, which is a Hornby Railroad locomotive. And, um, okay, I'm going to probably demonstrate um, at some point a premier, uh, like a, a premier model, as I call it, a premium model. And on that, you, 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 you're you probably going to see separately fitted parts and a fully detailed cab. I'm going to be wowing over it and cooing over it and everything else. And you, you think, well, why am I talking about, why am I sort of praising 
creating up a highly detailed locomotive and I've just uh, sort of extolled the virtues of a slightly less detailed one, you know, with moulded on details. And that's because I look for positives in everything that I'm looking at. So when I, when I go at that, I'm not contradicting what I'm, I'm not really contradicting what I'm saying. I'm not just looking at the, the plus points as a, you know, as a, so again, so when, when I say that the mode, you know, this is a ring for a motor, it can be changed. That one can't, but I, but this, from what I can gather, is a one, is a really, really wonderful a motor that fits inside of these. So again, even though it's not re uh, serviceable, I'm hoping it won't need replacing for many, many years. Okay, so, so like I say, I try to look at the plus points of everything. Is your glass half empty or half full, they say? Mine's half full. I'd rather it's full to the top, but there you go. <laughs> All right. So anyway, thank you very, thank you very much for everyone um, who's looking in on this. Um, obviously, if you wish to subscribe, now if any of you are worried about subscribing, okay, to, to a YouTube channel, I wonder what subscribe meant. What does subscribe mean? I know it sounds like, like ignorance, pig ignorance, but it don't cost you anything to subscribe. Is all it means if you subscribe to someone's channel, uh, you'll be alerted when videos come up. That's be that is being made by that particular person. So if something goes on to that channel, you won't be made aware that there's there, there's a new video out that's been made by them. So I mean I, I've I've subscribed to quite a few people now. I know uh, subscribing does not cost you any money. Okay, you don't have to pay a subscription. I know it sounds obvious. It may sound like an obvious thing for me to say. If you're saying, well, what's he talking about? And any fool knows that. Well, well, before I subscribed to a channel, I didn't know that myself. So there you go. Okay, so, okay. But look at that now. We're going to just have a little pause and look at these lovely locomotives in the station. Now, the two locomotives you're looking at in real life would have never met. Okay, possibly never met. Not in the form that format they're at. I mean, this is what the format they would have been in the 1950s. Unfortunately, all of these were scrapped by 1933, the 440 counties. But, you know, again, plus points. I look, if you look at my video, which talks about the counties, I've looked for the, I've, I've looked for the, the plus points on those locomotives and I've come down on the side of the defence of them okay so anyway so I think I've um, gone on for long enough now okay uh, so thank you very much for um, watching my video anybody who's looking on my videos thank you very much for watching thanks for your interest any comments obviously there's a comment section you can make comments uh, keep them keep them polite okay um, you know, if, if you think I'm a stupid old fool, then uh, I'm 63 now. If you think I'm a stupid old fool playing with trains, then by all means, you can say that if you wish. But keep it polite. No swear words, please. <laughs> OK. Um, OK, I'm enjoying this. and I'm hoping that this now is my lifetime hobby. OK, so but, but thank you very much. And good night. Thank you.